Oshodi is a community within the cosmopolitan city of Lagos, bounded by Mushin Local Government, Onigbongbo Local Government Development Authority, Ikeja Local Government, and Isolo Local Government Development Authority. A settlement with a humble historical background, it started with less than 300 people in 1830, when Onigbesa of Igbesa Ado left his domain to seek refuge in the thick forest, where Akisode was a hunter. A source of historical presentation affirmed that Oshodi's communal life started with five compounds of warriors that came in company of Oshodi Takwa, the chief warrior from Lagos Island, to protect Onigbesa and his subjects against invasions by Dahomeans. The source further affirmed that after 14 years of sojourning at the small settlement, Onigbesa returned to his royal domain and gave out the parcel of land as compensation to Oshodi Takwa. Thus commenced Oshodi's community life. Oshodi Oko, as the islanders know it, shares same ancestral historical background with Oshodi in the Petado area of Lagos Island. From the humble little community, it gradually but steadily transformed to a developed commercial hub. Due to its closeness and location, Oshodi continued to attract immigrants from far and near, mostly those in search of job opportunities. Being strategically located with road network connectivity, it attracts a high volume of vehicular and human traffic. It connects Lagos Island and major towns from various parts. It is a major bus terminus for both local and interstate commuters. Today, Oshodi is densely populated, accounting for over 15,000 people per square kilometer. A result of several industries located at Isolo, Bagada, Ilupeju, Maturi, Ikeja, and even Apapa. These industries play a major role as factors that propelled Oshodi to an enviable level of economic prosperity. The establishment of a railway station by the colonial authority is another factor that propelled high population density. It also influenced trading around the station, especially of fresh agricultural produce carried by the trains from the hinterland. Trade in farm produce attracted other sets of traders to rail lines despite laws, rules and regulations that forbid such a practice. Gradually, it took on a monstrous dimension. From rail lines, it spilled over to the road, bringing with it the unnecessary inconveniences. It gradually created an unprecedented perennial traffic greed, such that, at times, it could take more than three hours to get through Oshodi bus stop. Oshodi represented gallant efforts by thousands of the underclass to invent means of subsistence for themselves, and consequently it resulted into the sordid environment that became its main feature. Oshodi, rain-soaked garbage, carpeted human waste, infested earth on which people walked stood and sat up for several hours daily. The moral decay, filth and stench, as well as the body harm that people confronted in this place on a daily basis as the price for survival was enough basis for a responsive government to act. The multitude of these traders come rain or sunshine unprotected were under severe stress and harassment from the miscreants that collected various tolls and charges for the use of the place. It became a collective embarrassment. The physical and mental implications, including constant crushing to death of scores of people by the trains, was unacceptable to the Babatunde Raji Fashola administration. Thus, the present administration, as part of its efforts in bringing sanity and decorum, has to evolve firm measures in enforcing existing laws and regulations against street trading and direction of illegal structures. In an effort to make the state live up to the status of an enviable megacity state 
where every individual is given the opportunity to pursue his or her right of existence and the good life, ensuring a clean and environmentally friendly Oshodi rail line, and more particularly, decongesting the nagging notorious traffic holdup became a top priority of the administration. A city conducive for human habitation. Indeed, that works. Therefore, a firm decision by the administration is a demonstration indicating the importance of Oshuti as part of that choice, the dream of decent community. The new look Oshuti is a big product of the mandate given in April 2007, a social contract to meet the yearnings and expectations of majority of Lagosians, an assignment to pursue their collective dreams of decent living conditions. The part of my address about what has happened in Oshu and how it can be replicated everywhere else. We're not done in Oshu, for example. We approved money for the building of a market to accommodate all those people who were removed from the real life. And we need to finish one before we can move to the other. It's only that kind of success that we can take with us. And when we tell people that we intend to do this, even if they disbelieve what we say, clearly they will not disbelieve what we have done. Depends of my opinion. No, I think people have been informed about this renovation or clearing of this uh, Oshodi entirely. There's nothing bad about what they are doing. It's just for the progress of the uh, people. So we can, you know, we are getting more advanced. You don't, you don't have to be going back. Everything has to be renovated and be modernized. So that is the best, of, the best of my knowledge. Uh, 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 Allah is trying, but I know it will affect some certain people. They still need to, to abide with it. So maybe if the, the Lagos State Governor can help us to do a certain assistance to provide the place and be selling their proper, uh, their, uh, their goods. Because some, are, some, some of the women, are the, they cater for their husband. And some of the men, they always cater for their families. So but we beg the Lagos State Governor to assist us in providing the place for them to be for their own future. What is happening now, we like what the governor is doing. The governor is doing well. Because what he's doing is for the benefit of everybody. Fantastic. 100% fantastic. In fact, I want to congratulate the governor. A good man with a vision of what a city should look, should look like. We are not disciplined in this part of the world, and we have to change our attitudes to life. Do you know that most people they are complaining about the use of uh, the usage of this uh, pedestrian bridge, which we spend about millions of naira to construct? Like I was telling somebody now, what we need to do now is we have to change our attitudes, attitudes to environment, attitudes to our life, attitudes to even the traffic. We have to. Do you know that? Do you know that some people are still complaining about the crash elements, which protect people's life. In fact, if I can see that governor, I will give him a handshake. The man is doing a fantastic job. Please let him continue. Let him change Lagos for us before he leaves the office. Look, I was surprised one day. I, I was going to Ikeja and I said I wanted to pass that route. I gave to road. Within five minutes, we were gone. Today, too, I had gone out. I passed, I gave to road to Moshi. You won't even believe that the road is wide enough. So, but the people who complain are the people who have been displaced. His Excellency is making provision to relocate almost everybody. If you don't step on toes, there won't be improvements. If you were here, when the road was congested, you will know, you will understand what I'm saying. We have never had it so good. And I just pray to God to continue to uh, guide him and give him the wisdom because he is doing marvelously well for Lagos State. That road is the important road linking everywhere. Anybody that is coming to Lagos, if you get to Shudi, you get to anywhere in Lagos. But I agree, you pass through Shudi. Going to Lagos, it's Shudi.
going to Yanokwaja is Oshud. Going to Ikeja is Oshud. So that place is an important place. It, as it's security wise and for the sake of the killing of, because there's a lot of times the vehicles have killed a lot of people there, maybe by losing their uh, brake, uh, the drain and so on and so forth, kill a lot of people there. But removing those people from there, putting them in another place, make that place a place to reckon with, a place to pass through, a place to be recognized. At least, anybody who is passing through Oshodi now, we know the difference is clear. If you, if, before, if you pass through Oshodi, you, you will spend two, three hours on one spot. But go there today. Two minutes, you are away from uh, Oshodi. You pass through Oshodi. Eh, and so many places like that. Modernization through provision of infrastructure that would bring comfort and easy social interaction is a pointer to the love and affection of Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola, SAN, to the team in masses. A level playing ground is being created to pave way for equal opportunities of economic emancipation and individual survival. A responsible and sensitive government, such as in place now, could not do otherwise, considering the level of economic activities and the strategic position of Ushuti in the developmental plan of Lagos State. True to his words, Governor Fashola is vigorously responding to the yearnings and expectations of Lagosians. His selfless service and dedication to projects capable of transforming Lagos State is a demonstration of leadership quality expected in a civilized society. With time, Ushudi would become an investor's heaven. Within just this brief moment of Ushudi's transformation, an area that is witnessing a greater leap is the massive provision of lock-up shops and stores to accommodate various displaced traders. This project is a private initiative that has the government's approval and collaboration. The success recorded on these projects is a pointer to the fact that when the government is providing favorable atmosphere, investments would surely increase, thereby enhancing economic opportunities and job creation. Well, if I may say, it's a very conducive place for us for now. Because before, I do sell at Ararami along the road there, along the road there, but I don't find it easy at all. Because touts on every Wednesday and Saturdays, they do collect money from us. But here, it's not like that. It's a peaceful place, which I really thank our government for that. Because if they don't ask people to quit from the main road, we won't be able to locate ourselves here, if I may say. It's a very conducive place. Very, very okay for us. We marketers, we really appreciate it. What our new Lagos State government do? Uh, Governor Raji Fashola, I really appreciate it because if the man did not pursue everybody like that in the main road, we won't be here today. I'm telling you. So we are very, very conducive. It's a very conducive place. We are okay here. Actually, good things don't come easy. The world over, transformation comes with pains and sacrifices. But at the end, there would be comfort, orderliness, and progress. The story here is not different. Disruption of social setup is to usher in a rewarding future, an enviable Oshodi with all necessary modern structural facilities that would result to higher economic development. Development of physical structures, especially shopping complexes, is visibly spreading across Oshodi. Today, Oshodi is more economically viable. It only demands regulated administration and control so that all the economic opportunities would be fully exploited. The wind of change has and is still blowing across Ushudi, sweeping off the sordid environment, chaotic traffic jams and reduced criminal activities to the barest minimum. Orderliness has taken over. The era of social destabilization and public disharmony has gone. A new social order and regulations are in place. The main intention here is to make available the Adokuta Express Road and Agede Motor available to motorists in Lagos. And we are going to make it available from Abuya here down to Jolaga. So this exercise was predicated 
on those two fronts. Free flow of traffic and security. The security aspect of it is that a large number of citizens of Lagos have complained about so many things happening around some of these points, especially Oshodi, Yanopaja, Oshi, Bolade and the rest. And just to mention for this uh, axis alone, and just like we cleared the other side of Oshodi, we are going to make this place people friendly. The motor parks will be rearranged and they will operate their vehicles without interference from the market. Market women will be allowed to do their marketing where it is legally permitted, outside this area. There are no market stores that will be made available for them, but they will not be allowed to operate on the railway line or on the road. For security-wise, the RRS, the tax force, GMT, GST, and all of them will be at hand 24 hours to maintain safety on this road. So we are taking notion of back to the glorious days, 20, 30 years ago. No motor operators here will be so dismantled that they will not be able to operate. They will operate. No genuine and legally assigned market women here will be prevented from operating. This operation shown has been total, no casualty, no injury, no death. And we also want you to put on record that it is a fait accompli. This thing will not be rebutted. No amount of pressure will change this beautiful thing. And everything that you see here is for the interest of the people doing business, is for the interest of commuters, is for the interest of the transporters, and it's going to take congestion away from the Kuruduru. Maryland or Mopolaji Bank and Tony is congested right now because people have to divert to this place. People use Tottenham land when they are coming back from work. Now this road will be available, the co bridge down to this road and down to Songwater, where a lot of Lagosians now reside. Environmental outlook has both physical and psychological effects on people. It is sometimes the inward reflection of the people within such environments. A first-time visitor to Lagos would take this airport junction loop as it is at present. But for those who have the knowledge of what it used to be without any prejudice would give kudos to its marvelous transformation. That illegal refuse dump transformed into an eye-catching beautiful environment. This is one of the numerous sites that were once an eyesore but now transformed to attractive green areas dotted with multi-plural colored flowers by the administration of Babatunde Raji Fashola SAN. Indeed, with these right persons at the helm of affairs in Lagos State, more inspirational and laudable programs aimed at improving the quality of life should be expected. However, the success of this innovative administration, charged with the responsibility of pursuing the goal of better living standards, depends largely on the people's collective sense of responsibility and cooperation. The idea of seeing the government as a separated entity by some people is erroneous and myopic. In the present dispensation, people are more essential. We are all stakeholders. People's welfare is paramount, and the Lagos State Government is not lacking in its responsibility as demonstrated in the change going on here. Obviously, the journey is still far. A lot still needs to be done. More conducive markets are needed. Streets to be cleared of all impediments. The realization of this noble dream rests with us as a people. Our vote that ushered in this administration is a collective exercise. As it's often said, man is the architect of his condition. However, the pressure to satisfy his selfish interests often blindfolds his sense of collective responsibility. His judgment becomes beclouded by his wants to the extent that environmental conditions become diminished. It is in realization of this excessiveness in man's behavior that laws, rules and regulations are put in place to regulate social and physical conditions. You can see that uh, a lot of work has gone down. If we are going to sustain this place. Our men are going to be on ground. We are not going to allow anybody coming back to put anywhere on the red line. So it is better that people get used to that. 
um, most of the things that we have seen around here have been appendages to the boundaries, the, the setbacks. And these setbacks were there purposely because of safety and security from the red line. The people have resolved it. And this time around, we're not going to allow that to happen because that means a lot to us in Lagos State. So we encourage people to come down to Lagos. But when you come down, you don't come down to become a legal resident or trader. Try and be as lawful as you can because there is a lot that govern our state. The government needs people's collaboration and cooperation to move the state forward. Let us be law-abiding and discharge our civic responsibility as and when due. Oshodi's transformation and other milestones of Babatunde Raji Fashola administration have become manifestations through which dream policies have been translated into tangible and concrete accomplishments. Without any shadow of doubt, the environment is essential to the development of human beings. Indeed, the state of one's environment goes a long way to determine what one turns out to be eventually. The above premise is very realistic, if only for these facts. Diseases breed and tend to spread faster in dirty environments. Erosion causes rapid reduction of available land capital for structural and infrastructural development. Noise pollution impairs psychological health. Poisonous gas emissions result in dangerous stratospheric and atmospheric depletion and many others. In spite of these proven and tested facts in this part of the world, the average human being cannot be bothered about the state of his environment, which over time led to poor environmental practices. This has led to we as a people losing so much due to our failure to protect our environment. Lagos State has been faced with a wide range of environmental challenges like flooding, 
unauthorized felling of trees, which has resulted in erosion and soil infertility, indiscriminate dumping of refuse, construction of drainage channels. The list is almost endless. Furthermore, as a people, we are aware of the climate change which poses one of the gravest threats facing the city of Lagos and the world as a whole. This is believed to have been caused by the depletion of the ozone layer and melting of polar ice, thereby leading to massive flooding in some cities of the world. Considering the effect of all this, the administration of Babatunde Raji Fashola in Lagos State has come to the realization that the challenge of meeting a mega-city status without bringing possible changes to the environment must be tackled headlong. To this end, the administration embarked on a number of environmental protection projects as steps to reversing the worrisome state of the landscape. This underscores why the state is currently undertaking aggressive open space development. This campaign has led to the clamor for all and sundry to inculcate the habit of planting trees. Fourteenth July of every year has been declared as Tree Planting Day. Trees have been scientifically proven to be very useful as a first line of defense in the fight against global warming, as they absorb carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and give out oxygen. Tree planting on its own is not an end. It is part of the total environmental sustenance program of this state government. It involves solid waste management, proper disposal of refuse, construction of drainages, clearance of existing drainages, our monthly sanitation exercise, and the flood control and flood abatement exercise that are part of a comprehensive plan not only to sustain the environment, but to improve the quality of the lives of those who put us here. And I'm very proud to say that 